you you were born in uh, in the eighties. You 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 you're a fan of Michael Jordan. And we watched the um the Tony Parker documentary. What was it about him that you liked, and how did you get involved? Um, it, it was it was a very very cool experience for me because I'm a huge basketball fan, and of course, when you like basketball in France, you 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 like Tony Parker because you it was like a. Uh, all Michael Jordan. He, he was the, the French Michael Jordan. <laughs> so, um, so it was. Uh, I was very lucky to 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 get involved into uh, uh, this documentary because, as I told you, I I, I started being a, a sport journalist. So at first, I was uh, I was in uh, in the writing um, uh, industry. I was uh, I was a sport journalist for a basketball magazine. So I had like several meeting with with uh, with Tony Parker's, but he, di- he didn't remember me at that time. It was <laughs> it was you know just you know small interviews because uh, he did a lot of uh, interviews like that when he when he was uh, in France. And so I, I always get to follow his career, and uh, um, of course I I, I um, I've been a foreign exchange student in the U.S. in Texas. At the same time, he arrived in the U.S., so it was like kind of a a nice coincidence and uh, and uh, when um, when um, we decided to do this documentary uh, I was very excited because I feel and I felt like um, I really know the story and I could really tell the story right. Was being a fan of Tony Parker kind of um, a problem at the beginning to kind of to kind of pull yourself away from just being a fan and to get to actually know his story? It could have been a problem. I, w- I was a I was a fan of of uh, of his journey because I was a, I was a fan of him as a Frenchman, but I wasn't a, a fan of him as a basketball player because uh, you know I'm a I'm a Phoenix Suns fan, so uh-huh. of course I hated the Spurs. And, <laughs> and, and um, but of course I I I really uh, respected uh, Tony because uh, of his career because of uh, all he did for France, and the problem was. Uh, I knew the story very well. Um, I know a lot of French people know the story as well. And so I had to find a way to tell it in a more international way because um, a lot of people um, didn't know all the things we know here in France about Tony. What is... So that's, I think that, that's why the, 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 the main problem for, for this. Yeah. I was, I was going to say, what does Tony Parker... Uh, mean to France and, and before Tony Parker made it to the NBA was basketball that big in France or was it more just about soccer and other sports and and what does he he represent to France um, like I told you he's on, he's on Michael Jordan and um, basketball wasn't as big as it is now because of Tony of course but because also of other players and because I think also of the the, the, the good work that the NBA uh, does internationally um but it was it, it was something basketball was something in France where we had, we had good players before Tony Parker of course and he, he learned from these players and um we didn't we didn't really know him before going to the NBA if you didn't know about basketball at all you you wouldn't know that a little French guy 19 years old were going to the to the NBA or going to America and and in the in the documentary you do such a good job at capturing both um, the success of Tony Parker and also the, the downfalls and the challenges that he faced. Did you find it important to, to kind of balance out the player and show the good as much as you show the bad as well? Well, I think that's, that's the main point of a, of a good story. You, you don't want to, you don't want to, to read or to, to watch uh, uh, something where uh, the, the main character is always successful and uh, of course, Tony has always been considered as an um, underrated player. And I think it was, uh, it was something um, not very fair to him uh, because people will always say, people still say, okay, Tony was good, but he had Gino Billy with him. He had Tim Duncan with him. So we w- wouldn't really know if it was that good. But um, I'm not... I'm not totally cool with that <laughs> yeah, yeah because, uh, <laughs> because uh, i think it would have been uh, it would have been a, a great player anyway um what was your question, <laughs> your question <laughs> I, uh, I was just saying like well, how, oh yeah the, yeah yeah the, the the downfall and and the success of course it was very important that's why i i chose to uh, to break the 
the, um, the, the timeline. The, I, I didn't want to, to go from point A to point Z. Mm. Uh, I, I wanted to, uh, to balance um, the, the film with, uh, uh, like you say, uh, success and, and downfalls. Mm. What do you think his biggest um, success was throughout his career? Because, you know, he's, he's done so much and he's met so much to France. What do you think his, was his biggest success? Uh, I think that will be the, the 2007 NBA Finals uh, when, when he, he, he get the uh, MVP award. But I'm sure he would say that will be the, 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 the gold medal he won with, with France at the Eurobasket in 2013. Uh, because uh, they finally um, they finally won against Spain. Uh, that was a huge team at that time, and uh, that was big rivalry. And uh, for him, he really wanted to win with, with France because winning with France was so much harder than winning with the Spurs. Um, and in the inter- in the documentary, you have so many good interviews. And of course, you you interview Kobe Bryant. Um, he comes in about thirty minutes into the documentary. And um, how was it interviewing him? Because I know just even from the first line he says in the documentary, it he seemed like such a good storyteller. Like, um, how fun was that interview? That was great. Uh, that was that was that was a moment I will remember for for my entire life. I think uh, it was complicated at first to get him to the interview because. You know, of course, we were, we were working side by side with Tony, but he wasn't helping that much in getting interviews because he was, you know, he's also like a, a regular person. He don't want mm-hmm. to, to feel embarrassed to, to, to ask people to yeah. interview. Yeah. So, you know, he, he, he didn't know I, I, I went to, to see uh, uh, some players that maybe not really um, a big fan of Tony and it was also important for me to to get an interview maybe from uh, rivals and, 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 and players that didn't go along with Tony like uh, Juan Carlos Navarro from Spain or, or Terry Porter or Derek Fisher uh, all, all these guys and for Kobe um, I, um, I sent I, rem- I really remember that I, I sent an email uh, to his uh, production company Mm-hmm. Because I thought that would be a smart way uh, to get him into the movie, and uh, it worked. And we spent six months exchanging emails, and the the guys from there were very cool, and they really wanted to do it. Uh, Tony and and Kobe met at the World Championship in um, in China a few weeks before the interview, so they of course they talked about it a little bit, but they, they talked about so many things. And the funny thing is. Um, I get to the plane to uh, to LA, and when I'm, uh, it's uh, literally the, the the few hours before getting into the plane, I received a mail from um, uh, Kobe's agent saying we cannot do this interview. Oh wow! Uh, I'm not sure uh, you're you're the right person for that. I don't remember what was that. <laughs> uh, I think he thought that I, I I lied at some point. And so I was literally getting into the plane and this agent told me, you cannot do the interview. I think he thought um, his uh, agent wasn't the right agent, uh, the, um, Tony's agent. So I had, um, I called, of course, uh, Tony's agent and, uh, and, uh, and I, I told him to, to call the guy and the guy wouldn't still believe it. So uh tony's agent i i I thank him for that i thank her for that i'm sorry uh she just passed the phone over to tony (laughs) just talk to tony if you don't if you don't believe me and so they say okay cool and so we did interview but uh, and then the interview of course was great because uh kobe at that time was very busy he was always busy even if he was not playing he was involved in so many things and so we set up all, all of uh, uh, gears and, and lights and stuff. And uh, we did, I think, 30 minutes. That was very wow. short. But all, the, all his answers were like so powerful. And uh, like you said, the, the, the first question I asked him was, uh, can you introduce yourself and, uh, and tell me your, your link and your relationship with uh, Tony Parker? And he, and he said this uh, great line, uh, uh, I am Kobe Bryant. I play against Tony for years and he's responsible for me not winning more championships. So <laughs> <laughs> going from there, I was like, okay, it's going to be a, a good interview. 
How long is the research um, for a documentary like this, like getting all the archi- going through all the arch- archival footage and lining up all the, um, the interviews with all these athletes? How long does that take? It could be long. It could be very long, but it was very quick because we needed to do it very quickly. <laughs> uh, that's just uh, you, 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 don't, you don't really know how much time you will have. And for this documentary, it was very particular because I was working on another documentary for, uh, because I, I, I'm a, an employee in a production company and, and we do documentaries. So I'm very lucky because I had like, so many projects coming to me. And so I was working on this uh, Netflix original about a French rapper uh, called Gims. Mm. Um, so everything was very cool. I was like following him, doing interviews and, and we were traveling the world with him. And at the same time, we, know, we knew that we had this project about Tony, but it was a little bit blur because Tony Parker was very interested in working with us in documenting maybe his last season, but he wasn't sure yet that it was his last season. So we are like, okay, we well, maybe we'll see some, we, we'll see if we could do something. And um, the season went and he was like, so do you want to film something or uh, what's going on? So we decided, okay, we need to shoot, but the, the documentary wasn't sold yet. So we needed to, uh, to, to shoot with uh, our own funds, our own money. So you don't want to do that <laughs> when you're a production <laughs> company. And, uh, and of course, I was busy with the other documentaries, but I was like, okay, I can handle this. I know the story very well. It's very clean in my mind. We're, we're, I need this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. I need this archive, this archive, <laughs> this piece of archive. And so uh, that's, that's how it went. And finally... Uh, the pandemic struck and uh, Netflix who wasn't interested at first asked us to do it and to edit it in one month (laughs) so I was like okay I can't even get off my house and I need to uh, to do a documentary I didn't even finish shooting because I wanted to shoot so many other stuff but that's how it goes also in this industry. You need, you need to, to, to make up for the best. And, uh, and when um, Netflix asks you for a Tony Parker movie, okay, you need to deliver a Tony Parker movie and uh, you need to focus on your strength. I know I had like a big interviews with Tony, with Kobe, with the Spurs organizations uh, players. I, I knew it's going to be good. I knew I, I, I had some very cool moments in, with this family and uh, very emotional so I know I could do something, but I didn't know I could do it that fast. And so, of course, it was a, it was a, it was a very helpful to know Tony's stories. And I, I, I can tell you that some stuff uh, uh, I put in the movie was just memories. And I was like, I'm sure there's <laughs> something in this paper about this, and I'm sure we're gonna find it. <laughs> and you talk about like how um, you were kind of rushed to, to make the documentary. How much of being a director is about compromise and you know having to get the product out on time as well as you putting out your own vision? That's, that's the whole point, I think, for me of being a director that's uh, making decisions. And uh, of course, sometimes you work with people uh, behind cameras, uh, people, um, uh, beyond computers uh, editing and they, they're not happy wh- when what you get and you're like man that's where we need to do it with that and sometimes uh, you, you, you're you not happy with you, you don't have the sound you want in the interview you don't have like the, the lighting you want but you have to do with it and uh, of course you try to do the best as you can and you try to put your vision in it and you try to, to uh, uh, I, I, I like to put emotion I like to to, to to make people, to drive people to certain directions, and uh, and you need to do what what the with your um, uh, w- w- what you have in your hands, and uh, mm-hmm. and that's the whole point of being a director because in documentary you will always have to adapt yourself. That's that's the point. And because you got cut um, kind of short because of the pandemic and Netflix wanting um, the documentary so quickly. Did you have any any ideas of what you wished you could have got, or what you would maybe um, were were planned to do for the documentary that you couldn't end up doing? Was there anything that you were going to do that, um, that I, got I knew cut short? that I, I knew that um, we we had some good stuff, some very good stuff, like I told you, especially to uh, to tell it 
um, for an international audience. Mm. I really wanted to to do um, a nice portrayal of uh, Tony Parker in America. That that's why my that, that's why my part. but I think uh, I could have like had so much stuff in France. I, I would have liked to do more stuff with him in France because we could have done that. I was it was always a thing like okay that's easy to do let's do mm. it later but then at the end I got caught up and I was like oh damn maybe we could have done more stuff with him in France and of course you always want to to add like um stars characters in it and I mm. was I, uh, I, I was supposed to do interviews with other players like Jason Kidd oh. Dwayne Wade wow uh, they, we we were, I, that, that, that's still uh, bad to think about it because I, 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 took, <laughs> I thought it would, it would have been great to have these players. And I was very close to, uh, to get LeBron James. Uh, oh, I, wow. mean, to, to, I, I didn't know, uh, honestly, if uh, it would accept because I didn't see him talking in other documentaries for like ages now. Mm. But uh, we were negotiating. And um, so, of course, you could always do better movies. You could always do better work uh, but like I told you you have to do what with what you have and, and the condition and we didn't have that much money and so we we needed to do the best film as we as we could mm. and what was it oh you go Jesse no no you go it's fine oh I was gonna say um it's kind of on like a lighter note but what was his house like because you go to his house and he's got these massive slides and stuff like that did you get to go on the slide or anything? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't go to the slide, but his house <laughs> was very, very, very cool. It's it's surprising because um, San Antonio is a surprising city. It's, uh, it's in the middle of nowhere, but it's huge. It's like so many, um, so many houses for kilometers, and uh, uh, he's kind of uh, thirty minutes one hour away from the city. And uh, he, he, I think, he built his dream house. You yeah. know, with a. Uh, He's got a zoo. Uh, he's got <laughs> wow. like you say, like uh, water slides and uh, uh, basketball courts, of course, tennis courts, and uh, uh, yeah, I think he, he he wanted to show off. He wanted to uh, <laughs> to, to, to to live his dream, but it's uh, we were very lucky because he didn't uh, at first. He didn't want to us to show show his house from uh, from the um, from the sky, you know, with a mm. drone shot, mm. because he said, you know. Um, in France, people are very shy about money and they, they don't like to talk about it. And it, it's, it's true. And if he showed that, um, people would judge him and would say, oh, okay, he just, he would just want to show off and, 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 and show, show us his money. And uh, I convinced him and uh, I told him that it was, you know, it was international, it was Netflix. So we, we could show that and people will like it. They would say, wow, that's amazing. And they won't say, uh, oh, this guy would just want to show up. I think, I think the documentary did that so well. It showed um, with his dad being American and his mom being French, it really showed well his almost two sides. You know, he's got the unashamable confidence of the American and, and also the, uh, the kind of keep yourself grounded and, and stay humble from, from the French side. And I think that's what the documentary did so well. It really captured him, you know, even as a player, I think it reflected in his game. Sometimes he would do things that were a little more flashy and had a little more character than what Tim Duncan would be like um, or Ginobili, but he also stayed quite reserved. And, and so, yeah, I think that's what the documentary did, did really well. I was I think. I was going to say, you touched on it earlier, you had, um, you talked about you doing your other documentary, Gims, and, and was that shooting at the same time as Tony Parker? Almost at the same time. Uh, right. I, I started shooting Gims a little earlier. Uh, we spent, uh, I think it was a year and a half shooting with him, you know, going on tour. And, and uh, I don't know if you, if you, uh, if you saw the, the yeah, documentary, we- but yeah. Um, uh, we, it was it was more easy because it was uh, the 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 um, how, how would I say that um, the path was more clear. You mm. know, we all, every, all all the deal were, were, the deal was sealed with the uh, with Netflix, and uh, we we knew what we needed to do. But it was it was a big challenge for me because that was the first time I did a documentary on um, on um, 
on a singer and it was on a popular singer especially it's 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 a it's a, it was a totally new world for me so i had to put a lot of effort in uh, understanding the business and 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 do a lot of uh, i did i did a lot of research uh, i read a lot about him and uh, because also i wanted to give like a historical um, um background to to his story with the is linked uh, to uh, Congo and uh, the the music there, and so it was it was it was hard to do, but it was easier in a way that um, I knew where I was going. With the Parker documentary, it was like um, on the side project. You know, yeah, right. let's do that, and we'll see if it happens. You know, <laughs> and uh, you don't really like to be involved in the situation because you might end up with like very good stuff, and nobody will see it because nobody wants to pick it.